one of section 3.5, we take the area, or take the region below the graph of um, g of x equals e to the negative x squared uh, from x equals 0 to infinity and rotate this around the y-axis and see if this region actually has finite volume. So it's a region that has, you know, infinite area in the sense that the solid has infinite area in the sense that we're taking x values from 0 to infinity, but it may actually have finite uh, volume. So the region that we're rotating about the y-axis looks kind of like this. Um, so this is the graph of e to the negative x squared. And we're just going to take this area and just rotate it all the way around. So the resulting shape that we're going to get is um, it's going to kind of look like, um, like a mountain, I guess. It'll be at this peak here at the, at the origin, and then just kind of slope downward all around. Uh, probably the easiest method uh, to use for this, since we're rotating around the y-axis, is um, cylindrical shells. You can kind of imagine that the other side will look like this. See that a typical shell is going to look something like this. And here the height is just going to be the y coordinate of the graph uh, at you know, any point xy. So it'll be at any point x, it'll be uh, e to the negative x squared. So we're going to be integrating from x equals 0 to infinity. We're going to be looking at these concentric cylindrical shells as, they, as x gets bigger. So the integral from 0 to infinity of, well, just the formula for cylindrical shells, 2 pi uh, times the height, or times the radius, which is uh, x, times the height, which is just e to the negative x squared, and dx. So this is the integral that we want to compute. Uh, this is really, this is an improper integral, so we want to look at the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral of zero, er, integral from zero to b of 2 pi x uh, times e to the negative x squared dx. And so this will be the limit as b goes to infinity. Let's pull out the 2 pi. And if we make the substitution, u equals negative x squared, and du is equal to negative 2x. Um, then, let's see. I'm going to want to take the integral. I'll change the limit or the limits of integration in a moment here. We'll have the integral of, well, du is equal to negative 2x dx. Uh, so dx is equal to, or x dx, is equal to negative 1 half du. All right, so this is then negative 1 half uh, e to the u du. And let's see, you know, for the limits of integration, uh, if x is equal to 0, well, now we need to write this in terms of u. Well, if x is e equal to 0, then u is still 0. So we can keep the lower limit. And as x approaches infinity, well, u is then going to approach negative infinity. So we do need to change the upper limit. And it's customary to write the um, smaller of the two limits on the bottom. And we can do that uh, by just flipping these around and then adding in a minus sign. So here, let's see, our twos will cancel out. We'll be left with pi and 
uh, by switching the order of integration. Our minus sign will cancel out with minus sign in the integrand. And we get the integral from negative infinity to 0 of e to the u du, which is not at all difficult to integrate. Um, I should say pi times the limit as b approaches now minus infinity, the integral from b to u. That's not um, quite technically right to write the integral from negative infinity to zero since the integral is um, defined on by taking Riemann sums on a closed and bounded interval. All right, so uh, pi times, we can take the limit as b goes to minus infinity of this integral, and we'll just evaluate it from zero to, or from b to zero. This is e to the zero minus e to the b. Uh, this is equal to pi times, uh, well, the e to the zero is just one. And limit as b goes to negative infinity of e to the b is just zero. So we're left with just pi times one or pi. So it's kind of amazing if you think about it that even though this thing we're taking x values going from zero to, inf or from negative infinity to infinity, so all possible x values, and rotating this region that seems to be huge, you know, completely around you know, the entire xy plane, yet the volume is still finite. It's, it's strangely enough equal to pi.